The Unix file system is a file system used by many Unix and Unix-like operating systems. It is a distant descendant of the original file system used by version 7 Unix. Design AUFS volume is composed of the following parts, a few blocks at the beginning of the partition reserved for boot blocks, a super block, containing a magic number identifying this as a UFS file system, and some other vital numbers describing this file system's geometry and statistics and behavioral tuning parameters, a collection of cylinder groups. Each cylinder group has the following components, a backup copy of the super block, a cylinder group header, with statistics, free lists, etc., about this cylinder group, similar to those in the super block, a number of inodes, each containing file attributes, a number of data blocks. Inodes are numbered sequentially, starting at zero. Inode zero is reserved for unallocated directory entries, inode one was the inode of the bad block file in historical Unix versions, followed by the inode for the root directory, which is always inode two and the inode for the lost plus found directory which is inode three. Directory files contain only the list of file names in the directory and the inode associated with each file. All file metadata is kept in the inode. History and evolution Early versions of Unix file systems were referred to simply as FSFS only included the boot block, super block, a clump of inodes, and the data blocks. This worked well for the small disks early Unixes were designed for, but as technology advanced and disks grew larger, Moving the head back and forth between the clump of inodes and the data blocks they referred to caused thrashing. Marshall Kirk McCusick, then a Berkeley graduate student, optimized the 4.2 Bahamian dollars SFFS by inventing cylinder groups, which break the disk up into smaller chunks, with each group having its own inodes and data blocks. The intent of BSDFFS is to try to localize associated data blocks and metadata in the same cylinder group. And, ideally, all of the contents of a directory in the same or nearby cylinder group, thus reducing fragmentation caused by scattering a directory's contents over a whole disk. Some of the performance parameters in the super block included number of tracks and sectors, disk rotation speed, head speed, and alignment of the sectors between tracks. In a fully optimized system, the head could be moved between close tracks to read scattered sectors from alternating tracks while waiting for the platter to spin around. As disks grew larger and larger, sector level optimization became obsolete. With larger disks and larger files, fragmented reads became more of a problem. To combat this, BSD originally increased the file system block size from one sector to 1K in full Bahamian dollars. And, in FFS, increased the file system block size from 1K to 8K. This has several effects. The chances of a file sector's being contiguous is much greater. The amount of overhead to list the file's blocks is reduced, while the number of bytes representable by any given number of blocks is increased. Larger disk sizes are also possible, since the maximum number of blocks is limited by a fixed bit width block number. However, with larger block sizes, Disks with many small files will waste space, since each file must occupy at least one block. Because of this, BSD added block level fragmentation, also called block suballocation, tail merging or tail packing, where the last partial block of data from several files may be stored in a single fragment block instead of multiple mostly empty blocks. Implementations Vendors of some proprietary Unix systems, such as Sun OS Solaris, System V Release 4, HP UX, and True64 Unix, have adopted UFS. Most of them adapted UFS to their own uses, adding proprietary extensions that may not be recognized by other vendors' versions of Unix. Many have continued to use the original block size and data field widths as the original UFS, so some degree of compatibility remains across platforms. Compatibility between implementations as a whole is spotty at best. As of Solaris 7, Sun Microsystems included UFS logging, which brought file system journaling to UFS, which is still available in current versions of Solaris. Solaris UFS also has extensions for large files and large disks and other features. 
in 4.4 Bahamian dollars and BSD Unix systems derived from it, such as FreeBSD, NetBSD, OpenBSD, and Dragonfly BSD. The implementation of UFS1 and UFS2 is split into two layers, an upper layer that provides the directory structure and supports metadata in the inode structure, and lower layers that provide data containers implemented as inodes. This was done to support both the traditional FFS and ELFS log structured file system with shared code for common functions. The upper layer is called UFS, and the lower layers are called FFS and LFS. In some of those systems, the term FFS is used for the combination of the FFS lower layer and the UFS upper layer, and the term LFS is used for the combination of the LFS lower layer and the UFS upper layer. Kirk McCusick implemented block reallocation, a technique that reorders the blocks in the file system just before the writes are done to reduce fragmentation and control file system aging. He also implemented soft updates, a mechanism that maintains the file system consistency without limiting the performance in the way the traditional sync mode did. This is the side effect of reducing the requirement of file system checking after a crash or power failure. To overcome the remaining issues after a failure, a background FSCK utility was introduced. In UFS2, Kirk McCusick and Paul Henningkamp extended the FreeBSD FFS and UFS layers to add 64-bit block pointers, variable-sized blocks, extended flag fields, additional birth time stamps, extended attribute support and POSIX1 EACLs. UFS2 became the default UFS version starting with FreeBSD 5.0. FreeBSD also introduced soft updates and the ability to make file system snapshots for both UFS1 and UFS2. These have since been ported to NetBSD, but eventually soft updates was removed from NetBSD 6.0 in favor of the less complex file system journaling mechanism called WAPBL which was added to FFS in NetBSD 5.0. OpenBSD has supported soft updates since version 2.9 and has had UFS 2 support since version 4.2. Since FreeBSD 7.0, UFS also supports file system journaling using the Journal GEOM provider. FreeBSD 9.0 adds support for lightweight journaling on top of soft updates, which greatly reduces the need for background FSCK and NFS v4 ACLs. FreeBSD, NetBSD, OpenBSD, and Dragonfly BSD also include the Dirash system, developed by Ian Dows. This system maintains an in-memory hash table to speed up directory lookups. Dirash alleviates a number of performance problems associated with large directories in UFS. Linux includes a UFS implementation for binary compatibility at the read level with other Unixes, but since there is no standard implementation for the vendor extensions to UFS, Linux does not have full support for writing to UFS. The native Linux X2 file system was inspired by UFS 1 but does not support fragments and there are no plans to implement soft updates. NeXTSTEP, which was BSD derived, also used a version of UFS. In Apple's Mac OS X, it was available as an alternative to HFS Plus, their proprietary file system. However, as of Mac OS X Leopard, it was no longer possible to install Mac OS X on a UFS formatted volume. In addition, one cannot upgrade older versions of Mac OS X installed on UFS formatted volumes to Leopard. Upgrading requires reformatting the startup volume. There was a 4 GB file limit for disks formatted as UFS in Mac OS X. As of Mac OS X Lion, UFS support was completely dropped. See also, Comparison of File Systems, Unix File System. Notes. References. External links, Jiren C. Van Gelderen. Little UFS 2 FAQ. FreeBSD. Retrieved April 8, 2013. File Systems HOWTO, Other File Systems. The Linux Documentation Project January 27, 2007.